This is News 8 This Morning. See, those ads reminds me of my whole weekend trying to fight those little buggers. Reminds me of <clears throat> my entire last week they were in my home. <laughs> just such mm -hmm. a mess. Good morning to you, everyone, and welcome to Halfway Through Your Week here on this Wednesday. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Stella Escobedo. We begin with the latest on our fight against coronavirus and its impact on our economy. Our county is in danger of having to go through tighter restrictions and more closures right now. San Diego's coronavirus case rate is headed into the highest tier of purple, but the state says we're not there quite yet. News 8's Evan Narani live to explain how we got there and Evan, what we can all be doing to reverse course here. Right, that's the big question is can we get those numbers to drop below seven cases per 100,000 residents that would keep us in tier two. The goal would eventually be to drop below 3.9 cases per 100,000 residents that would get us to tier three and loosen restrictions even more. But for now, although our case rate has gone up, those new numbers as of yesterday point to 7.9 cases per 100,000 residents. Uh, we will not move into that more restrictive tier quite yet. Now, when you factor us up against other counties, Counties, the state has a different system and a different calculation. They put us at 8.1 cases per 100,000 residents, and that is because of a lack of testing. So uh, the state creates new numbers. They calculate their new numbers as they stack us up and kind of rank us amongst other counties in the state. Uh, but again, as of right now, we will stay in tier two right now, the less restrictive tier with some modifications. Uh, but while that technically qualifies us for tier one, the state says we're not jumping there quite yet. We want to be slow in the forward movement so we can have some certainty and make sure that any decision to move a county into a more restrictive tier is done thoughtfully with a lot of deliberation to ensure that we don't cause businesses or communities to feel sort of stuck in the middle going back and forth. It's always that constant back and forth between the businesses staying open and making money versus the public health. And right now the state says that they are not prepared to move us into that more restrictive tier to slide us backwards. They say if that case rate for the county remains elevated above seven cases, that threshold, health officer Dr. Wilma Wooten says tier one could easily be in our future, so we can't really let our guard down quite yet. Now there have been plenty of opinions as to what exactly is the cause of this spike, or so to say in uh, cases and state officials and county officials do say that there cannot be one specific cause. You can't attribute it to something specific. You can say, however, that it's up to us individually. So some would say restaurants. Others would say San Diego State University could be a cause. Officials do say we need to keep our guard up. We need to make sure to wear masks and keep that uh, social distancing as much as possible to keep these numbers down before jumping into tier one. So we stay where we are for now, but caution definitely something to keep in mind. I'll send things back over to you. Evan, thank you. Yeah, we're going to be watching this one closely. Plus today, an expanded testing program begins at San Diego State University as they work to fight the rise in coronavirus cases there. News 8's Chris Groh is live on campus. Chris, how will this program work? So this is going to target those that live on campus, the more than 2,000 students there. And the idea is that it will eventually turn into a surveillance program, so to speak, to keep an eye on what's happening on campus because a majority of the cases right now that are being reported are off campus students and they want the ability to know when to go on lockdown. But some critics are pointing out, well, why wasn't this done earlier? And this was SDSU's response. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. The guidance has changed and thus so our response has changed. They're a community in and of themselves and I think there's a, a, a really good argument to be made to exempt the numbers coming out of San Diego State University and any of the other universities and colleges uh, from our numbers. And so you can hear there this obviously catching the eye and the attention of the county and the supervisors. But this testing program that starts today will try to test all 2400 students on campus. The goal is to try to get 500 students per day. Each student will be given a testing slot time to show up to. And then what happens next when they get all 2400 students, the university will start randomly picking students from each residence hall to be retested. The school is also encouraging off campus students to continue to get tested, which is provided for free. Now to give you an idea of the scale of the problem, the school is reporting 667 confirmed cases and nine probable cases. 
Again, a majority of those are off campus undergraduate students. Now the school came off lockdown this Monday, uh, but again, this testing program is to give campus leaders a threshold or an idea of when another lockdown will be necessary. They have also put a pause on in person learning here on campus, and they have told us that there has been no spread due to uh, that in person teaching, but they are trying to make sure that they don't continue to spread it that way. And then also we know that the entire California state system making preparations for the spring semester by canceling in person classes and making everything go online. Eric Stella. Chris, thank you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the numbers of San Diego County coronavirus numbers. Officials are reporting 294 cases out of nearly 6,000 tests. That's a positive rate of about 5%. The 14-day rolling average is at 4.4%. Nine new deaths brings that total to 742 people. 606, time now for your morning rush. Two men involved in a deadly freeway shooting of a Navy sailor in Mountain View could learn their sentence today. Brandon Acuna and Harvey Liberato pleaded guilty for their roles in the death of Curtis Adams back in 2018. They were part of a group who ended up in a burglary and shootout prior to the shooting, resulting in a flat tire. Adams pulled over to help. Acuna's brother Edson mistakenly shot Adams, thinking he was the homeowner from the shootout. Edson is awaiting sentencing of his own. Imperial Beach is rethinking the role of the San Diego Sheriff's Department. A committee will meet today to review current spending levels and police practices. Then they're going to present those findings to the public and city council. The city says it comes in the wake of civil unrest following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. A draft report praised the department for helping reduce crime to historic lows in Imperial Beach, but also criticized its data collection practices and rising personnel costs. San Diego Unified is now helping its students stay fed even on the weekends. The district is expanding its curbside grab and go meal program to include breakfast and lunch for the weekend. Students will now be able to receive 14 meals each week rather than the previous 10. Starting this week, the additional lunches will be available to pick up to save for the weekend on Thursdays and Fridays. They can be picked up from 81 locations Monday through Friday from noon to 2 p.m. And the Bobcat Fire is burning dangerously close to the historic Mount Wilson Observatory in the San Gabriel Mountains north of Los Angeles. At one point, the Forest Service said the fire was just 500 feet away. Firefighters are working to protect the telescopes and scientific equipment as well as communication towers nearby. The Bobcat Fire has burned 41,000 acres. It's only 3% contained right now. And fire crews are not quite finished with the Valley Fire. They're putting out hot spots and working to get it fully surrounded. The fire started more than a week ago. It has now burned just under 18,000 acres. And at last check, containment is holding at 87%. The fire destroyed more than 61 buildings and about half of them homes. A local assistance center is operating at the Rancho San Diego Library. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what started this fire. And while our state is dealing with the wildfires, another part of the country is still dealing with Hurricane Laura and the fire. Financial costs could end up in the billions. Plus, this morning we're tracking Hurricane Sally that made landfall just a few hours ago. We'll bring you all the details on that. And the Latino vote will be an important factor in the race for the White House. How President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden are making their cases. Then talk about an invasion. Yeah, one thing you can do right now to safely get rid of those pests.